Hooray, I think it's actually live now. It says live. Now that's taken me some time to work that out. Am I still on the camera? Take this off. Or maybe I need to put the video. Let's see that I've got sound. Two people have joined. Yes, it's live. Whew. Oh, sorry, I just breathed into the mic, but it's just taken me a good um, 20 minutes to get live. Don't know what uh, Facebook was doing. Thanks, Eli, for joining, and Jason. I can even type hello. Oh, make a crashing noise. It's bashing about. Okay, that's done. Okay, um, so before me, the other day I showed this. Uh, it's mic down to the correct level. And it's the Sarissa Precision Industrial thing. Um, power room. Power room. And uh, yeah, so I opened this up and I thought I'd just go and make it um, on camera and see how that goes. So I'm going to switch down to the camera view, which I think I can do with going to do that one and so is that live now yeah you're a little bit behind me but yeah so some of the things I've got to use to do this cocktail sticks vital a little piece of MDF cut off which I'm going to pour some gorilla wood glue on which seems to do the job and um, the instructions, although they look very simple. This is where, this is the bit that, this is the deadly bit that's going to trick me up. There's, looks to be a very small amount of components, but what's going to happen is when I start, I'm going to like connect the wrong thing to the wrong place. And that's the pile of bits and pieces. So this is a kit from Sarissa that's sort of under $10. And um, it looks really simple. So if I switch now to, not my, not me, that one. Um, I get the overall view. Oh, I can get rid of that thing too. Yes. So, and just check that I'm focused. Presses the button for focused. There we go. So, right, where do I start? So, pour out some glue to start with. Gorilla wood glue. Oh, sh oh look at that. Fails at the first hurdle. Video dedicated to removal of the glue lids. So yeah, I've got more glue on myself. But what I'm gonna do is just pour some on this plate here. Is that in the frame? It is now. Oh. Yeah, that's not working. Something's got jammed up in front of that glue, so just squeeze the lid off, stick it down there, pour far too much on than I need. Now I probably need to clean the spout on this thing. So obviously it recommends they're building the base first. I use cocktail sticks to get the glue on. And um, what have we got? So bottom piece over here. Align it in such a way that the edge pieces are correct. It looks right. It looks like it's got a small section there. And on the back, you put the lengthy bit. Let's check that fits. No. Try it the other way around. No. This way around. Yes. So we have that on there. Side panel with the crack on it from the ground up, this side. Yep, and that sort of, bring that into the frame. Yeah, that sort of bit that's down there. Well, I can't, you can't see that in there. No, it's not worth me really showing the instructions. You wouldn't barely be able to see them unless I zoom right into them. Um, obviously, the other side piece over there with the detailing. What's gone in neatly? Sort of. No, that doesn't work either. Because it's got a narrow piece there, and I think that's because that narrow piece goes to the front with the narrow section. In there like that, in there like that. Mm. 
from now that works. Yeah, there's little narrow cutouts and they've obviously keyed that so that um, on this front piece there's a narrower section just there and that means you can only fit it together in that way so that's a kind of a quite nice key to avoid you making a mistake and um, yeah so that's your basic dry build and um, yeah that's it dry build so what I'm going to do is probably start with this door piece which is a piece of cardboard that goes inside and provides you a kind of a warehouse style grill. I'm not going to spray inside. Um, I'm going to just spray the model afterwards because it's quite sort of dark in there anyway. So I'm just going to sort of put it together. So starting off I'll just dot some glue on the areas here that I know that will fit on. So I don't know how many other people. Done a fair amount of this myself and the smell takes a while to dissipate. Oh yeah, yeah, the smell. The wood the wood the burnt wood smell will take um no, what does it take? It takes maybe like two weeks. Once it's dried out. You still get a sort of smell off it, um, maybe even a month later, just a subtle smell. Fresh from the packet, obviously, it's quite strong. Just make sure I'm not going out too high with that. Yeah, I mean, I normally would have my face a bit closer to this, but um, since I'm on the camera, I'm trying to keep the mic beside myself as well, so uh, I'm quite far away away but uh, yeah, you can just about see what I'm doing down there I think just sort of dotting it around not going on too heavy because it's going to squirt out of the sides if you do go on too heavy with it maybe a bit more just along the edge here and then time to line it up oops Yeah, so I've got some very minor squelch out. That's a technical term if anybody's interested. And uh, if I pick up my a dry cocktail stick, I tend to just sort of whip along the edge a few times with a cocktail stick, and that will pick up any of the splurged out, squirted out stuff. Obviously, check from the front for squirt out. That's looking fine. The door, in fact, even though it's a little piece of cardboard, is slightly hinged. So you do get a slight hinge on there, which you could use to sort of represent the door being slightly open. You could actually glue the door open slightly. And uh, yeah. So next up, now I've just done that piece, I shall start to get it together. I guess now I'm, I'm beginning to change my mind on the uh, spraying on the interior, which means what I might do is put it all together apart from the lid for this piece um, which I'll put on dry to hold it together while it's gluing. So right, given that this piece is at the back and it's one of the most substantial I will start with that and then one side piece to give myself a corner that's in one piece like that. So to do that um, just go along the bottom here I mean, it can't be that exciting, can it, seeing this, but eventually it's going to come together. It's going to be just amazing when this building tops out. The crowd will roar. I mean, it's nearly a sport. So I've done that bottom. I'll just leave that and then I'll do this one so that I can put them together at the same time. Again, just a little blob on there and then just strip it along. And there's probably no right or wrong way to do this, but definitely cocktail sticks. I go through them when I'm doing this. So just need to go into 
the edge pieces where it's going to come together. Only doing one of the, the joints there. Does it go as high as the top? Yes. So now both bottoms have got a bit on. That could actually do with a little bit more. I mean, it does dry quite quickly on there. Oh my goodness, this is this is hard work. <laughs> I'm going in left-handed and uh, just looking like I'm a complete dexterously challenged person. So obviously I've done that and I can see straight away on the back. I don't want to lift it up because it's obviously a little bit fragile. But you can see that dotting again there. Let's see if I can zoom in onto that. So yeah, so you can just see the white dots there of the glue that's squelched out. And in fact, I can also see that's not down too well there. So go back out to the uh, to that sort of level of zoom. Use a dry cocktail stick, and again, I just sort of rub it along. I mean, you could be ultra careful here, and so I don't want to get a single kind of rough edge on the joint, but I, I wouldn't be too worried. You can either sort of sand that down very gently later, or it's lost under the spray paint when you spray this. One thing I used to do with these um, is, for extra strength, I might um, put some glue along the, bottom, the corner joints in here because you're not going to see in here, um, there's no harm in just splatting some glue down there, which I'm going to going to do. There's a slight risk that you'll end up with sort of swelling if the glue uh, lets the, starts the um, expanding in the MDF, medium particle fibre board, medium density fibre board, MDF. I don't know if you call it the same thing in the States, but that's what we call it here. Anyway, I just splatted some into those corners, and that just means that's going to give that a stronger seal. So, now this side bit sort of goes up underneath and in, and then the front piece. So before I glue those in, I shall evaluate the tower on these bits here. Ah, OK, right, so basically the tower has these braces. I'm just testing them, but I'm going to probably have to use the scalpel on those. Oh. Hitting my glasses into the mic is not ideal. Get rid of some of the junk that's building up. Ah, so the corners are also. Interesting, the rest of this, um, I didn't need to use a scalpel, it was just, they were just sort of almost falling out, but obviously this, the, the tolerance on these bits means there's a little bit more wood holding them into the frame. So those are like braces that go on top of the, on top of the tower and around it, and slide down, and then the, the tower bits are coming out nice and easy, and then there's a ladder that's in there a bit harder, so I'll cut that out. Hmm. It's just got one little tab in there that's uh, 
state on it. So spare MDF. Right, looking at the instructions. So they have a little wooden trim along the bottom. And so that would appear that it goes together like that. So this bit sits flush inside the tower there, slides in underneath. Yeah, so that's enough of a dry build to show me. I wonder how easy it is to slide these down over the top once it's together. It doesn't seem like it's going to be too bad. Hmm, doesn't seem like it's going to be too bad. Now I can't get it off. Right, so that's telling me then to get this glued on first and finish the bottom. So here we go. Anybody else doing any modelling? tonight inspired to start work on anything don't all that shout oh what was that Yeah, I guess I could have put some along the back edge of that piece, but I didn't bother. It'll be held tightly together by the tower. And this one, the final one on the front. Yeah, I definitely am going to spray inside. That's what I'm going to do. Probably with the black, the black spray. I mean, you could go to town, couldn't you? You could put a little desk in there or something, just in case someone goes, oh, just have a look in there. Seems a bit of a waste of time, though, doesn't it, to add that sort of level of detail, unless, unless you're into it for real modelling, and you're trying to make a diorama where you really cared about that extra level of detail. So, right. Just being gentle with it and uh, easing it together. So, well, the other way to sort of get some of the glue off is just to use your finger to flatten it down. What the problem with that might be is that after you've been doing this for a while, your fingers will get very sort of gluey and pick up little bits of particles of MDF while you're at it. I understand with this medium density fiberboard MDF that it is actually not wise to sand it um, almost like resin really that uh, the fibers are not healthy to breathe in as you can imagine with any kind of fibrous material it's essentially sawdust cut down to the finest grade of dust and then impregnated with stuff I think there were periods of time in history where they impregnated it to give it strength um, with chemicals that weren't very healthy as well, but I imagine that's changed as regulations come in. Yes, yeah, so I'm going down the bottom again, just, I'd already done that one, but just putting some glue in those edges and that will just harden off in there and give the uh, structure a little bit more strength. Don't even know if that's visible on the camera. But yeah, going inside. So I mentioned in the previous video when I was just showing these off as kits before I didn't have myself ready really to um, to paint uh, or glue even. Um, 
that I was going to detail. I was going to detail them. I'm not going to the like I was saying that crazy extent of putting a. You could put a little guy inside a desk or something like that. But um, I am going to add bits and pieces to them, and um, I shall show some of those. These are from another kit. Um, these are from Battlefield in a Box kit, but they're little air conditioning units uh, that go on the on the side of things. In fact, if I switch to the, that camera, I can show these sort of things. So it's currently on the glue, but um, yeah, these are I think those are rooftop air conditioning units back from Battlefield in a Box to go on some of the pre painted terrain. I think these ones you'd put on windows. And then I generally, I have bits and pieces like this. This is an old Crow 6mm connection block where it, they had this habitation kind of thing where you'd have connectors on the side. And that's the sort of thing that I might, I might augment on different roofs and things. To And once it's all sprayed up and painted it just sort of gives that extra level of detail or you might put it on the side or um, as an extra bit of terrain for 6 mil. I've always got in mind what's going on around the edge. And uh, like I was also said before, I'm going to have bases. In fact, I've got some laser cut um, acrylic or perspex. I think it's acrylic they call it these days. And I'm having those done in small base sizes, like city block areas. Um, you know, sort of 7 centimetres by 11, I think I was going for, and some larger ones. And I will mount that. Uh, so when it gets its, once it's finally together, I'll get it mounted onto the Perspex base, and then I can add little blocks and other details to it. So, I mean, I've got a stack of those things. I got them out the other day. Lots of little tiny boxes and things. So these ones, this one is like a twenty. I've had this for years, an old piece of resin, but that's like a twenty-eight mil crate um, but again and that's badly painted it's just been dry brushed up at some point in the past but there's another one of those old crow six mil items but again on the top of a roof or um, if I was making this terrain base and I thought okay we'll put that there and that's extra cover for a squad member or something that was coming up around the side so looking at the scale wise you've got some 15 mil models there you've automatically got some extra good cover around the edge. This is an unusual piece. Curasan did some very fine detailed interior bits and pieces and that's a server array. Um, there's a Dell 1U, I'd say probably Pentium grade given the, uh, no. So these are a little bit old but um, I've had them for a few years and I don't know what I was going to do with them but I got the whole set from Curasan and then painted them all up. And when I did them, I was sort of using them in, in the large uh, space station thing that I've got, um, which plenty of people have seen because I've put it on videos and pictures for years. But it was handy to have those sort of up against walls and things. But again, that might be something. Again, like I was saying earlier, that could go inside, couldn't it? But you'd never see it when it was all glued together. But you could, for that sci-fi feel, use these things up against side panels and side walls. If you're building a bigger structure, I mean, people don't usually put servers on the outside of things, but that could be anything, couldn't it? It's just another hatch or doorway or boxes of some kind. So yeah, these are quite nice as air conditioning units from Battlefield in a box, and those are those type of ones you'd stick on a window, the American-style window air conditioners, and then other bits and pieces. In fact, I've just ordered from John at Ground Zero Games um, a set of his bits and pieces that go on the side of buildings. He's done a hatches, air vents, windows, doors, sets. Um, so I've ordered a sort of pack each of those, which again will go on the side of these and then it just sort of sci-fis up what's essentially a, um, you know, doesn't look like a particular period model. Right, so that obviously, so looking at this, piece switching back which one that's me hello uh, and that's that so this one again has light guidelines on the side 
and which means it goes into this back section and will sit on there. Now all I want to just take a look at is when this piece, yeah again this is keyed on the side so you can only put that on the roof in one way and as I said earlier I'm going I'm not going to glue that on because I am going to spray uh, black inside here um, but yeah it's coming together quite nicely and this doesn't take very long does it so yeah, I'm feeling good about myself now having said that um, yeah what's that I was going to show I showed off this fantasy one the other day um, from foreground and just to give you an idea again of the the kind of details they put on this and why um, when I was approaching this I was thinking oh this is a little 15 mil it's less than uh, less than ten dollars for that uh, small building there um, but I had in mind I'd, I'd done these for um, I've done these foreground ones before for fantasy uh, skirmish I tend to play if you're interested Song of Blades and Heroes which is an Italian um, uh, game and um, yes I love these sort of buildings where you can put models in and out so yeah so here we go let's let's grab someone you can see inside the kind of detail you get and the kind of effort that you have to go to when you put these together you have a different base panel you have lining you're having to put all of those sort of Tudor woodwork panels in the side um, and then your stone paneling on the side there as well so there's an awful lot of detail on these and I must admit I had in mind when I was approaching these small 15 mil ones that I was going to face that kind of um, uh, challenge and of course I mean it's not the end of the world um, if anybody's made any of these foreground things they'll know that the quality is superb uh, on them um, that doors up up on the top there by the way because you have some stairs with these pieces but yes I guess you have a memory of these things so the last time I built MDF I built one of these and they have a they have an inn that they do uh, for these which is a giant sized inn which has three floors and um, I had it for almost a year before I tackled it and then I did it over a Christmas break uh, holiday break and it took weeks of sitting in front of the TV and annoying my wife with the smell of MDF. Yeah, so that's gone away now. Uh, back to this. So, yeah, as I was saying, I thought, all right, I'm going to do these. It's going to take hours like those big kits do from foreground, but they really don't. They're pretty quick to put together. Um, um, feeling quite good about that coming together nicely there so the only thing I'm worried about is I don't want to glue this on because I want to be able to um, spray inside and I want to make sure that when I put the chimney on the side now because I do want to build it out that that doesn't get stuck in there um, but if I stick that if I glue that from the top area That should be fine, isn't it? I don't want it the wrong way around. I've got the wrong piece. <sighs> okay. I think if I don't glue it on there, that will still come off relatively easily. Mm, he says. Yeah, that's coming off okay. Right. Go back to the top down view. Okay. So, slides that down, gets ready again, I'm going to put glue all the way up that grid section, I'm going to put glue down on the bottom area, where it's stuck against the wall, and inside all those areas there. Is that in the frame? Just about. So, I mean, if there's anybody that didn't see me chatting the other night uh, about the about the train, I um, was saying how much... I've got more comments and I can't see them. Hi, just saw this was live. Hi, John. 
Hello, Kim. Hi, Chris. Linus, Philip, John, Ralph, Eric, Harley, Sebastian. So um, the other day I was having a moan, really. I was saying, how many um, kits that you can see from foreground and the likes that w have been made really essentially for Flames of War. Now, of course, there have been, um, is it Dropship Horizon, the game? Um, games like that that came along and clearly boosted them enough to make more in the sci-fi theme. But I found all the dropship buildings um, looked, again, were kind of just square boxes and they weren't um, amazingly creative looking, but they were all, they were okay. You could definitely use them if you're building that city block style. Um, but again, they were 10 mil, weren't they? But um, yeah, so my moan was that, oh, I've gone too far up with the glue there. I'll just pop that off because I don't want it to, hmm, but that's almost instantaneous gluing. I'll just rip that off there because then it gets stuck to the roof bit. So yes, um, as I was saying, cocktail sticks, if you come in like late to this and you've not sort of re-round anything, I use a cocktail stick to pull any little extra side bits off of glue that have squirted out. But you can use your finger or anything else really to do that. So um, going back to the topic at hand, moaning about the fact that almost everything in MDF for years was just a... Um, a two up, two down kind of. Is it all worried briefly then? No, I've not got this on correctly. Um, style of World War Two townhouse kind of building. Nothing was out there for the. the no, that's just because I'm putting it on the wrong bit. That's it. Nothing was out there for the sci fi, sci -fi enthusiasts unless you went for the, the Ground Zero game sort of metal kits and resin kits that they do. Um, but now there's so much out there. There's the sort of all the resin from brigade models. Um, although there used to always be Snapdragon, that they were based out of Bournemouth in the UK, and they did a nice range of um, BattleTech buildings in six mil. But then they also extended that out to do some larger buildings you could use for 15 mil. So again, all I've done there is dry build that. Go to that view, and you can see in action. The whole thing. Oh yeah, and what I mean by Snapdragon. Oh, since it's a bit of a show and tell, I can get them out. So, yes, these are Snapdragon buildings. These are sort of um, in the six mil range that they did. So they had a power station which is this heavy chunk of resin here. Um, and then this is just a Thompson kind of little shop thing. And we've literally had these for 15 years or more, I think. And there's uh, some sort of flight base thing. Again, six mil, but that, um, as far as I'm concerned, they work for, look at that, you could put a, that could be a VTOL landing pad, just a small one for vertical takeoff. Um, this, although it's a power station, built for six mil. You can see again how those guys would work around there well. And then how even this one, which is again, which was six mil, it doesn't even have a door, does it? It's just sort of black panels. Uh, that again sits nicely up against this kind of thing. Once this is painted in and maybe had some bits of sci-fi added. And as I was showing earlier, when I was putting on little blocks of resin and things around the side of it, that then gives you this sort of look and feel where something's a little bit more um, modern sci-fi looking rather than um, turn of the century industrial unit. Yeah, so those are Snapdragon. They've, I've had those for years and always they've come out often in various different games. In fact, this is, some, uh, this is something that Snapdragon did for a while. Um, these little the containers for six mil. Very small. 
Do I have some six mil around? I'll just show up against that. I think so. If I've not crashed this whole thing. Yeah, so you can sort of see the the size of these little containers. But I think, I mean, yes, it's a container, but it could be um, just a box in 15 mil as well. I mean, the scale of these things when you're down here, you're not going to look at that and say, well, that is a, that is a container if you've just got it stuck up against the side of something and just adding detail to a, to an overall base. And as I said, I'm going to get those um, acrylic bases for these. It's going to be glued down and then have extra detailing added. Maybe the wall, maybe a bit of tarmac outside or something. A cadam tarmac concrete. So yeah, now I've been talking for too long and need to get back to just finishing gluing that on before the glue dries. Right. But to be fair, there's no harm in um, multiple dry a attempts when you're working out whether you've got things on the right side. So I'll do that one first and then I'll put the front one on last. So again, I'm just going to go into all of the edges the glue is beginning to sort of get a bit stodgy now well this is also on the uh, the cocktail stick is got a bit gummed up oh by the way I'm standing up that's another thing that um, I've been doing recently I sit down at work obviously working IT I've worked in IT for 27 years or something, which is a lot of sitting down, sending emails, looking at spreadsheets, and um, logging on to servers, doing stuff. So I've recently at home, I now quite often um, adopt a standing technique for painting and stuff. It's not too easy here at the moment because I'm trying to keep everything on the camera so you kind of like lock your body in a position where your hands are under the camera. But I have been finding it uh, quite good for painting. And uh, once you've got into it, you discover that um, standing for long periods of time is really not that much different from sitting. And yet with sitting, you might sort of do your neck in or something else while you've been sat there or back. I'm just going down the side. You probably can't see that just to get the sort of blobs of glue out. I mean, the one thing with PVA glue anyway is that it will absorb any particles off the fibre board anyway, plus... It dries yellowish sometimes, and but because it's taking on some of the fiber board, as it dries, it kind of yellows or dries nearly clear. So it's barely, barely an issue really. In terms of visibility, that white glue is not going to dry white and show out, um, and even then you'll be. Uh, Spraying over it, painting over it anyway. So one of the reasons I do like these is having that roof area obviously means you can uh, pop models on there. Had some basic rules in the, fir in the first edition of Runts and they're going to sort of continue in a similar theme for buildings in that... Um, you know, if you're within a certain distance of a building, it's just one one of a unit's two actions to go to into the sort of ground floor. And then um, a second action to go to the next floor. And since units have those sort of two actions, so they can move and shoot or shoot and move, they can also do a sort of double move out move, um, which um, means they could go up two floors and be ready to sort of hold the building and get some cover benefit as well. 
So again, yeah, this is a bit boring, but it's going through. But I like to make use of the of the train really. That's or some train when it's um very creatively styled um and doesn't really have anywhere you know, it might be a, like that power station there. There wasn't that I showed earlier, that there wasn't really any you know, some bits around the edge where the models could traverse, but there was nothing else for them to stand on. So yeah, big you know, sort of tick in the box for Sarissa on this one in that um you have got somewhere to cannot process conversation whilst glowing. Uh you have got somewhere to put the models on the top, even though again, I guess I could even not glue that lid, but I think that's too fussy. No one's gonna want to play a game where they're Stop for five minutes where you carefully remove an MDF roof. Um, so I teased that in there, that's gone together nicely. Yeah, now I just sort of resorted to using my finger to rub off some of the PVA. Again, sometimes, I mean, but the way to do this properly, obviously, is to. You should really. Is that going to go on there? No. No. You should get a small elastic band or some clips to sort of bring the whole thing together. Um, that's probably more important when you're doing those bigger kits, like I was showing earlier. The um, the kits from foreground because they're larger and the tolerances of drying glues and things mean you, you just can't keep the whole thing together so I should really um, put an elastic band around there but I haven't got one to hand such poor preparation but an elastic band would help but yes yeah, so I was saying with those bigger foreground kit there's so many layers of things that you put on you f suddenly find out you're doing the next floor and there's a floor to go in and then a side wall and then the outer wall and if you don't use um, proper clipping and proper um, uh, time for it to dry with an elastic band holding everything tightly together when you then come to do the next layer your tolerances are out and you can't glue it in and the, s and the, the edges won't go together now with this one given how simple it is I can see that probably um, what I need to do is sort of slide these things over and I've got myself something that's coming together So what do I do with these to get the glue on? Probably have to sort of squeeze some in there. So they seem to be indicating with these stripes that you put these in these places to line up with the outer ring on there. And then the, the ladder has sections on it that match up as you can see probably if when it's down there it's mm, not quite right well look at the instructions so there is a ring that goes right on the top that tidies up the tower and that will keep that tower top together neatly uh, actually, if you leave it down just a tiny bit from the very top, it uh, gives it that sort of slight chimney look. And obviously, you then have a hole through the middle. So, I can't put that one on because that's going to block my spraying down here. So I think that's all I'm going to do for now. And just wishing I had some a clamp or something to keep that together, but I can sort that out later. Yeah, so that's it really. Um, all I've got to do now is put those three things over the top of there and glue them on. Um, and then the ladder has got these little holes that go into the um, edge there to glue on to give it that ladder up the side. Where does the ladder go on the front or the side? It goes on the side. I was wondering about putting it here at the sort of front side, but no, it's fine up on there. It's just that it would present, at least when it was on the side here fixed on, it would feel like you had a route up.
for the models to then sort of go up the side and then climb onto the roof. But what I will be doing, of course, is when my little hatches arrive from Ground Zero Games, I'll put a roof hatch on here um, so you can instantly have that impression that, you know, one action to go in, one action to go up one floor, they come up through the, the hatch. Obviously, you can use your imagination for that anyway. <laughs> but, uh, I would like to put a kind of sci-fi hatch and maybe a fan on the other side or something. Or at least just one hatch and then maybe fans on the side, because if you put too many details on the top, you're losing space for uh, the, uh, the grunt squad to be hanging out on there and uh, letting rip with their, their rifles. So, yeah. Let's go down to that view and just have a look around the building. So again, you've got the door with the cardboard in there. I'm going to pop this lid off to spray black inside, although having looked at that, I mean, look at that, it's dark in there anyway, isn't it? Who's going to see that on a train table? But, um, yeah, I mean, it's so dark in there. I'm now beginning to wonder if I should just glue it on, but I won't finish that now and then put the main thing together. There's some sort of interesting details like that, but like I said, I'm going to put vents and aircon units and pipes up the side. In fact, a, a nice pipeline all the way up the back of there would look quite interesting as well. So very quick to put together, reasonable bit of terrain. Um, so simple really, it only took a long time because I was uh, waffling away. Um, but while I'm here, I will show and tell something else. Just check who else is on there. So. got these interesting kits so it's from um, this is the battlefield in the box and they're pre-painted and obviously again they're made for um, what are they made for there well the, I mean not flames of war but the next newer one team Yankee I got there in the end as you can see mass produced and there's some swelling in there so you don't get a perfect fit um, but you can of course um, buy two of these and then layer them because you've got the, the ability just to keep going up with them if you wanted taller buildings. The dry brushing is great. I mean, it is meant to be straight out and onto the onto the table. And you can see once I've sprayed that up, I've got it's going to sort of fit in quite nicely with it. What I am going to do on this again is I'm going to add more, add more details on piping and bits and pieces. I'll do nothing inside. I mean, they've just sprayed it black. Um, that would make for quite an interesting scenario, wouldn't it, to sort of have a a, a sort of built-up block urban area and actually put some grunt squads in there but not let the opponent know which ones of the buildings it's in. So they're sort of roaming, you know, starting to drive in to do a sortie through a, a town and, um, and you can just whip the lid off and say, oh, they were in that one um, and uh, start the action from there. So that's one reasonable idea for these. Yeah, the only thing I'd say about them is, again, they don't look very sci-fi, do they? These um, sort of simple boxes. They also do these garages, which I've picked up a couple. But again, very, very simple garage doors on there, looking at the scale. Pre-painted again. But if you did have some sort of bits and pieces like this, to sort of boost them up you could do that actually even having things on there does present you know if you said actually there were some guys going up on a roof you could get some cover from one side uh, but probably a bit too much detail really but certainly you, you know as soon as you've done something a little bit more interesting like this you've sort of sci-fied them up a bit haven't you really hmm right so Try and press the right button. Me. Aha. Uh -huh. So thanks very much for listening in. It's just been sort of a quick evening of me fiddling about with MDF. And um, I might build the other one on screen, but not tonight because that's going to be a longer one. That's the... Um, I've got it all here. You can see there's quite more um, junk in there. Um, and that's the larger factory piece that I'm going to put together. I do have one other thing to show.
that arrived in a kind of a delicate packet of a friend of mine that's got a laser cutting machine. And um, how can I get them out? So let's see. So he's done in various colours for me, and I will switch down. Are uh, these lettering pieces, which I'm going to put on the sides of buildings. Some of them I might just use. Um, some I might just use as they are, colour-wise, because they look like sort of signage, because they're that plastic laminate plastic. They always have the colour on already, um, and. So that's a rather big one. I don't necessarily know that I've got a building that's going to take that one. But um, I had them done in various fonts and different sizes. So the bigger, the smaller the word, like police there, um, the larger the font so it would fit on the side of a building. And I can't even remember what this one is, but you can see it's another different style of font that will go on the side of a building. And if I airbrush the building and then dry brush or paint these separately, or if I do the building, I could actually put these on last. And like I said, they've already got their colour and kind of look like signage. Um, so yeah, I've had a few different packs of those with wacky, um, various wacky uh, different words and names for companies that I, I just got in there. And he's popped those over because uh, he's got a really nice laser cutter um, and has done that for me. Um, in fact, the guy has done lots of bits and pieces. I've used them for counters for games, and he's done some laser cut bits and pieces for um, the new grunts as well for the broken condition. Right, so I'm just going to dump that all in there, so I won't bother looking at that again. Right, so yeah, those are going to be handy for me when I'm just, um, again, boosting up the train to make it feel a little bit more real and less... Um, Unless like just sort of bland buildings, you know, you've got to get some signage on there. Maybe some graffiti bits and pieces as well. The odd poster. Oh, one stuck in my hand. So yeah, I've been on a big drive to get, um, to finally get an urban city block together. Because uh, for years I was using um, these Kato uh, units and I never really weathered them up. They're Kato N-scale uh, modelling. And uh, I'm now determined to do the, the streets, weather it, do the blocks underneath these um, pieces that I'm building, um, put detail on there as well, little walls, extra detailing, so that, um, you know, I might even, for example, uh, where I put this on a, uh, a acrylic base, I might put like a garage on the side, um, potentially even a walkway in between. I was showing those walkway pieces that are from uh, Mantic Games, uh, so I could even sort of put something together that's a natural piece of terrain to move around on. But not too fussy. I mean, that's the main thing, isn't it? You don't want to, if you're doing, if, you know, 15 mil, so they're small, but you don't want to suddenly have really bits that you can barely move a model around. You need you need some space, and, and you need to make it sort of practical for the kind of game that you're after, really. But, uh, yeah, that's what I try and keep in mind to make it playable. Hello, Jamie. I've liked that one, thank you for, for joining in. So, um, yeah, that's everything. Back to me again, and just to say thanks for signing in. I'm now gonna end the live video, and um, I'll be back again when I'm building the next building in the next few days or so, and you'll be able to see the progress, because eventually I'll, I'll airbrush them, spray them. I will do a video specifically when I'm doing the adding addition of the small details and mounting them on the uh, acrylic bases because that'll be a little bit more interesting to see. I might put some rubble and bits and pieces on there as well. But that's one thing I'm actually not aiming for. I don't want to go for, and I'm looking down while I'm speaking at the camera, that's not good. I don't want to go for that complete wasteland look where you do just have loads of grey rubble everywhere. I want it to look like potentially uh, a neglected city. So something like that Battle Angel uh, movie that was out recently which had that fantastic... Um, city sets that they use the, the, where they looked sci-fi but worn out but not post totally post-apocalyptic they looked kind of usable so that's the kind of thing i'm after so thanks for listening and i'm going to end the live video cheers bye <laughs>